Hello everyone. In this session, we will be doing a totally new concept of circle and that is polar and pole. Polar of a point is extremely important part of circles. So let us first define what I mean by polar. And for that, I need a point P inside or outside circle and a line is drawn through that point P which meets the circle at Q and R. So picture is something like this. I take a point P, I draw a circle and then through P, I draw a line which meets the circle at Q and R. This is what I have described right now. What we do further is that at ends Q and R, I try to draw tangents and they meet at point P. The question is that Q R, the way I have shown in the picture, it is not the only position. Position Q and R are varying positions. I could have drawn line through P, something like this also, where I am naming now endpoints where that line meets the circle as Q dash and R dash. And at Q dash and R dash also, I could have drawn tangents like previous way. And then point of intersection of those two tangents, what I have shown here as S, is different from position T. So as Q and R move or as Q and R change their positions, obviously position T also changes. This is what I want to tell you. That point of intersection of tangents drawn at Q and R is a varying position and hence locus of point T can be observed or can be understood. So again I repeat, if through point P inside or outside, if line is drawn which meets the circle at Q and R and if further I draw the tangents at the positions Q and R and those tangents meet at point say as in picture T, then T is a moving position and locus of point T can be understood. What I have drawn here is that locus I have tried to show you by joining S and T and which happens to be a line. That line ST is important to us. Let me complete my sentence again, statement again, that if through point P, a line is drawn which meets the circle at Q and R, then the locus of the point of intersection of tangents drawn at Q and R is called the polar of P. That means what I've shown there in the picture, ST, that line is polar of point P shown in the figure. Point P is inside here and ST is outside here. Picture could have been other way also that you try on your own. Point P you keep outside and then try to do similar exercise and through P there also you will be drawing a line which will meet circle at Q and R. Draw two, three lines and see Q and R's various positions. Draw tangents at the Q and R of various positions and see point of intersection of tangents. When you join those points of intersection of tangents, you will be getting polar. Correct? So polar here is ST and pole is point P. So understand one thing. In picture, ST is the polar and point P is the pole. Don't forget that. Okay. Now, of course, you all must be realizing this that we should be in position to write now equation of the polar. So let us start with equation of the polar. Now, if a pole is given as x1 y1 and circle is x square plus y square equal to a square straight away I am giving you equation of the polar and which is x x1 plus y y1 equal to a square. Had you taken point P outside then you would have understood the meaning that we are talking about chord of contact only and chord of contacts equation was same x x1 plus y y1 equal to a square but actually polar is further I should say more general expression rather than chord of contact. For chord of contact, point has to be outside. Here I am saying point can be inside or outside. But equation is same as x x1 plus y y1 equal to a square. Okay. Again, equation of the circle not necessarily be all the time x square plus y square equal to a square. We will have to make provision for equation of the circle. If it is x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0, then what would be the equation of polar? Equation of the polar like again as equation of chord of contact would be x x1 plus y y1 plus g times x plus x1 plus f times y plus y1 equal plus c equal to 0. So that is 
equation of the polar in two different situations. Let me take one illustration for clarifying things further. Now my illustration is that find the equation of the polar of point 4 comma 4 with respect to the circle x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square equal to 1. I have taken here equation in the form x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square equal to r square of circle I am saying. And this is not of the form x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. So you will have to rewrite that equation. Okay. So I start x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square equal to 1. I simplify that and I get x square plus y square minus 2x minus 4y plus 4 equal to 0. And then I know how to write equation of the polar. It is x x1 plus y y1 plus g times x plus x1 plus f times y plus y1 plus c equal to 0. What is x1 here? 4. What is y1 here? 4. Substitute that and get finally your answer as 3x plus 2y minus 8 equal to 0. That is your equation of the polar of point 4 comma 4 with respect to the circle x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square equal to 1. Right? Let us proceed further. And the next one is that I take one more illustration. So that there will be finding pole. Okay? So my next illustration is that find the pole of the line x upon a plus y upon b equal to 1 with respect to the circle x square plus y square equal to c square. Now here pole is to be obtained, polar is given. In previous question, pole was given, polar was to be obtained. Okay. Now how do we proceed from here? Now since pole you are interested in finding, I will have to name it. So I say let pole be h comma k. Fine. With this h comma k, I know how to write polar's equation. And that polar's equation using formula I am saying. It, x, x1 plus y, y1 equal to a square. That formula I am saying. Using that, you know how to write equation of the polar. That I write as xh plus yk minus c square equal to 0. You can always compare this equation with the given polar. Because polar is given as x upon a plus y upon b equal to 1. And both stand for same thing. So, can't we compare them? By comparing what we get, that h upon 1 upon a equal to k upon 1 upon b equal to minus c square upon minus 1 which on simplification will give you h and k. h turns out to be c square upon a and k turns out to be c square upon b. And what was our job? To get pole. This h comma k we were interested in knowing. So final answer for pole should be c square upon a comma c square upon b. Right? So you can get pole also if polar is given or otherwise. Now here I end my session. Again, something new will be coming your way in the next sessions. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you. Hope you have liked this video. To subscribe, please click on this side. Or if you want to place an order for the book, please click on this side. Thank you.